So here we go. We got this base um, and from, uh, don't give me the line, I don't know. And we got the tabletop from Nebraska Furniture. I know that. This, uh, I don't know, but it's going, we'll tell you where we got it from. <clears throat> so this is the vision that my wife had um, to get this going. And so usually she comes up with the vision and I try to help her in my best to make it a reality. Sometimes we get it spot on. Sometimes we get very close to what we're happy with. Sometimes, you know, we gotta go back to the drawing board. So jumping right in, here is the actual complete table as sold at West Elm. This is pulled from the website, a screenshot. This is the actual base that we bought from the West Elm outlet. When we purchased it there, we got it for around 260 bucks, somewhere around there. These are some of the tools and items that I used to complete the marrying of the tabletop to the base, nuts, bolts, washers. Uh, and we also got the glue from the same place. Everything came from the same place, which was Lowe's. So I'm just showing you the materials that we used. And after the next clip, this clip, we'll get into live footage of me putting the table together. All right, just so y'all can see, um, I believe this is 56 inches um, across or round, I should say. Um, we'll get the exact measurement and put it in there, but this is the tabletop. Nice, it kind of matches with um, some of the graining here. If you can see, it's like a grayish tint. This has like a grayish, it has a, some other little pops of color, like a little bit of purple veining. I don't know if you can see right there. Um, nice, it's a nice, nice size, perfect. We are in our nook area. Oh, it's a tripod right there, but this is our nook area. This is where I'm gonna do everything. Um, you see, I got the hand truck because this thing is heavy. So something that I do wanna know, especially if you're doing something like this by yourself, you wanna put something underneath the, uh, the table. I'm just using these blue, this blue tape to sit it on. It's gonna put a, like a triangle pattern. That way um, I can get underneath it and grip it to lift it up when the time comes, um, and I won't have I won't have to um, struggle to get it, and it won't pinch my hands um, when I have it on the floor because, like I said, this is heavy. It's definitely, whew, I would say probably close to a couple hundred pounds, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, probably close to a couple hundred pounds. Just lifting it up. Um, it was a task, and then, of course, trying to get it on the hand truck. So trying to do this by yourself, it took two guys to bring it in here. So um, just wanted to show you that. That's a little tip that I would suggest if you're going to do something like this um, so you can be able to pick it up, especially if you buy yourself. So. so what I did was I made some marks around to center the table base and um, this was made to line up the points on the table base and these circles are the holes that I'm gonna drill to put the bolts in and um, I'll bring the table base over and show you 
what I mean by lining up. So, um, of course, I come from the school of measure twice, cut once. Um, and actually, I've been probably measured this like three or four times to make sure it was centered. So that's why I put these extra marks here. So when I line it up with the table base, it'll be right back in the position that I um, that I marked it out for. So as you can see now, still some adjustments need to be made. This should be right on center, right there. Okay, and I should be able to go to each one. See how that one is. So I should be able to go to each hole and see that circle in there. And so this line measured up with that. And so you can see how this one is off a little bit. It may have been how I drew a circle, but let me see if I can get this. So I'm just gonna keep going around, getting it right, getting it right, okay. So those are my marks. Now obviously, when I drill this hole, the circle will be removed, but I still have this line to get me on point. And I just use like a, uh, a wax pencil, a white wax pencil to, um, to do that. So you can see. So now that I double checked my marks to make sure that everything is on point, I'm gonna come in here with my drill bits here. And um, I think I'm gonna use two of these. I'm gonna use a seven eighth for the bolt hole and then I'm gonna take a little bit off so that the um, washer will sit in there recessed and I'm gonna use the one inch. So I got all those measurements spot on. I had already measured it, but I'm just double checking. Once I start drilling in this wood, I'm not gonna have the liberty to be able to put the wood back on there. So better to be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna use the seven eighth bit um, it kind of works with the width. Yeah, I'll be a little bit closer so you can see. It kind of works with the width of the bolt. I want this to sit in there and be under, you see? So when I drill that hole, obviously I'm gonna drill the hole here in the middle of the circle. Take this down and then this will be recessed in there. So. Get two of them to do it. Make sure you um <laughs> make sure your drill is charged up. And I got my, my spare battery on there, but I've learned from doing stuff like this plenty of time. You get started and then your drill goes out and you gotta stop. So I don't wanna do that. So here I go, I'm starting to drill my holes. Mind you, my original idea was to keep the washer flush with the wood material on the bottom of the tabletop. Because I started to drill my holes for the bolts, it made it harder for me to drill the holes for the washer, so I abandoned that idea. It's the same application, it's just a matter of preference, so I didn't... I didn't see the need to try to uh, force that to continue to be the, the idea that I went with. The, op the application was the same. I'm still going to epoxy the bolts and the washer to the base. It's just the washer is sitting above the wood material line instead of being flush. And honestly, because this is under the table, it really didn't make a difference one way or the other. And so 
Another key thing is just to make sure you take your time. You want to make sure you're drilling your holes centered to the marks that you made. And obviously, you're going to have to get it at the same level or the same height or depth, I should say, so that your top surface is level. Uh, you don't want it to be one side is higher than the other uh, because you didn't drill down. And a lot of this stuff is done by eyeball. So you really need to just take your time and um, it'll come together. It's trust yourself and you're already doing it yourself. So trust yourself. So I'm vacuuming the holes out and I'm going to drop a bowl in there just to see where I'm at as far as the depth of the hole, how is the bolt sitting in there? Is it below the um, surface line? So that when I sit that washer on there, I can get a good amount of glue stuck to the washer underneath, as well as a good amount of glue below and around the surfaces on the bolt. And it worked really good doing that way, doing it that way because I was able to get full coverage around both objects, the bolt and the washer. And later on, um, you'll see, I'll show what I um, wind up going with as far as applying the glue. Here I'm just adjusting it, making sure um, that I got it to the right depth. And so after this clip, we'll go to a live clip to show the progress. All right, let's see. So the premise is Sorry, I'm still not sure. The premise is to fill this hole up with the epoxy. Have a little bit of relief around the edges of here so that that epoxy could sit all around this. And then I'll put let's see. I'll use one of these uh, washers here. So it'll be like this, a bolt, and then that on top. And so you want to make sure this is sitting flush, for one. Um, but I'm also planning to... Um, Take this out on the edge of this, and uh, I'll show a better clip, but I want to have this sitting flush in there. So, I mean, I still got some room because this bolt goes deeper down in there, so I'm about to take some more up out of there. So... We'll be back. So I'm back. So I wasn't getting this as flush as I wanted to get it. So I'm going to try to use this countersink. And um, if need be, I might have to drill around just to get it to the height that I want. Uh, I'm going to go with the countersink first just because I feel like this is going to work best. So like I said, I switched over to the countersink just because the depth of the hole wasn't like I wanted it. And there's um, a tip on that, the previous drill bit that I was using. And that's kind of to help you start the hole. So I went to the countersink to kind of just refine the interior parts of 
the hole that I created for the bolt. And that, that worked really well. Um, sometimes you have to make adjustments to your original idea just because you're doing something custom. It's a custom modification um, to get two pieces to go together that wasn't done factory. So it's going to be a lot of drilling, vacuum it out, clean it out, place it back in there, see how it's fitting. And then I had to do that to, to the all of the other remaining holes. So it's just take your time. The main thing is to take your time because you can't put the, the wood material back in there. So it's better to take off a little bit, see if it's fitting, take off some more, see if it's fitting. And then once you get close, or right on, then you can back off on uh, how much material you're removing. But as you can see, it's a lot of back and forth. But once I got the first hole done, I was able to move through the rest, you know. You kind of see the level or the depth of um, how the hole is and you're able to just replicate it. It gets easier and easier. And this is a, I mean, think about it. This table from the store is over $1,000. So it was worth it for us that we found a tabletop that we like, and obviously we like the base to go ahead and DIY whichever material we found. So it definitely was worth it. So you get the whole West Elm look for a fraction of the cost. So here I am just cleaning the surface, cleaning the uh, hole out to make sure everything's fitting right. So now we'll come back to a live clip showing progress. So this is how I want it to fit. Right flush to that, and then I'm going to take it down with the one inch. This is how it looks inside of there. I'm going to fill this up with epoxy that way, to have a good amount in there to grip, it's going to grip around these edges, and, um, and then I'll have the washer the recessed washer so it'll be in there like this so it's going to sit flush on there like that so that's good i'm not even i don't know if i'm going to recess the washer i might take it down a little bit more but i might recess it a little bit i'm gonna to have to recess it a little bit just because I want to make sure that the washer is adhering to the um, particle board. Here's a close-up of the test fit. Everything's in there nice and tight. All I gotta do is epoxy them down. Go around. Everything's fitting nice and tight. Now, from bolt hole to bolt hole is going to measure out because I, I measured it and everything. But I'm going to actually line it up with the lines once I do the final application. And then I'll show more of this later. Um, I'm thinking I could have got a shorter bolt, but that's all right. I'm going to put that washer on there like that and then I'm gonna come in here put this here it's gonna be and it's gonna fit just like that so it's not not too bad 
And obviously this will be the last thing you see unless you're crawling under the table. And we ain't got no babies in here, so. <laughs> um, yep, so. Let me get this cleaned up and come back with the glue. So I went around, epoxied it, set it in there. Let me see. So this is how it is. I got it set in there. I put a little bit around the, the rim of the bolt and the washer on each one, just so we can have a nice, now technically you would use a clamp. Um, well, you could use a clamp to secure it. I pressed it down in there pretty good and made sure everything was flat so the washer wouldn't be floating above the wood surface. Um, obviously, you want that that washer to bond to this um, surface here. I think this is particle board, but anyways. So it's gonna take about five minutes, it says, to dry. I'm gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes, start prepping another area, and come back and see what we have. So it's been about, uh, maybe about seven or eight minutes and um, it's pretty, pretty um, solid to the touch. I'll wiggle it a little bit, but this is how you can tell if your thing is glued down, <laughs> then you pretty much know. So I left that there to kind of be a marker. Um, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer before I start messing around with it. Um, but just so you can see. And I'm not doing this aggressively, too aggressively, but I'm not doing it softly. Um, so, you can see that's on there. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit more just so I can be 100% sure um, that it's good to go. Then um, I'll put the base on it. I do want the base to be removable. So I'm not gonna put it on there until that glue is all the way dry because I don't want the, the glue to get stuck to the base. I wanna be, um, be able to move this, take this on and off if necessary. So, all right, so I let it dry for, um, I don't know, it's probably like over 20 minutes or so. That's in there. That's in there. Yanking on that. So that's in there. Nice and dry. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line my marks up. So here we go. I'm I'm doing the final fit, I believe. After yeah, this is the final fit after the epoxy has dried. Uh, make sure you don't erase your marks or make sure you do multiple marks so that you can have something to fall back on as far as lining it up. Because um, as you will see here, um, some there will be some adjusting that you need to do. So that's pretty simple. But like I said, take your time when you're drilling your holes because that makes this part a lot easier. Um, if I hadn't taken my time, then I would have had to modify the base or fight to kind of try to fit those bolts in those holes. And because I lined it up and had marks, it made it a lot easier. So we will come back with a live clip after this. So here we go. 
base is on there. That's on there. That is on there. So, if you can see, it looks nice, clean. Now all I gotta do is flip it over, just hand tighten it until I get it on the right side, and then uh, we'll be done. I didn't make too much of a mess. I'm probably gonna wipe those white, white marks off. You can see right here, I accidentally erased it, but it's still lining up. That's why I did three of them. That way, if I did erase one, um, Probably should have did four, but it's on on point. You can see, and I do have enough room I can move it. See, now it's lined up, lined up, lined up. All right, so here we go. The moment of truth. Everything is kind of hand tightened, ready for the table to be stood upright. And this table was heavy. So if it looks like I'm nervous or <laughs> like I'm struggling a little bit, trying to get this in position, it's because I am. It's not a light table. The material is very um, dense. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing it the safest way for myself, considering I'm by myself, and um, for the tabletop as well. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, how I'm gonna position it. And then at this point, I set it down because I wanted to, while I had it like this, make sure that it could hold the tabletop under its own weight after the glue, is dr glue has dried, which it could. And, there I'm go. There I go. Setting it up. So you can see um, everything's holding. So here I come back with a live clip. So just to finalize it, um, whoa. So these were all messed up on there. So got some more. These, I'm replacing them. And that's how it looks. This is how the bottom of it looks again. So, got two more to put, and then I'm gonna set it up again. Let me done. All right, that's how it look. Nice. Perfect for the space. Might scoot it out a little bit. I mean, everything is kind of... This table, because it has this variation of color in it, it's kind of pulling that color out of these chairs because these chairs are supposed to be a black, like a charcoal black. But now it seems like it's matching with the, I don't know if that's the suede or the velvety material that this is, but it's pulling that blue tone just like we have here on our island. We have, well, this is more of a grayish, but if you look right across, I mean, considering this is builder material and this is a secondary material that we bought, I mean, she couldn't have matched this no better. And I don't even want to tell y'all how much the tabletop costs. Because you're probably going to think I'm being false, but... Without me showing you the receipt, this was a hundred dollar tabletop and it's heavy. Got it on clearance. Master of uh, clearance shopping, my wife got it. And 
we bought this base months ago with the idea of getting a um, a stone slab fabricated same size and everything we we're going to get around the same size and something in this kind of style maybe not with these little uh, rivets in that's the only kind of drawback of this table is it has these rivets um, on the camera I'm sure it's giving off some type of feel but in person it doesn't look bad at all and for a hundred bucks I mean the table now in combination based on today's prices this table was probably I don't know fifteen hundred dollar table and I think all together just less than five hundred dollars so here is a full frame picture um, if you remember at the beginning of this episode, I showed you a picture of the West Ham website. The light fixture is not exactly the same. It's similar. But, and of course, the tables is not 100% the same. The chairs, of course, are different. Our space is different. But this is the final product. So let us know what you think. Let us know how you like it. If the video was informative, like, share. If you feel compelled to subscribe to the channel, we are getting more into the DIY um, phase of making our house a home. Um, this was the first project, well, ma more major project. We've done some painting and other things that we've shared. So, yeah. That's going to be it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'm out.